Okay. Mm -hmm. Personal diary. Yes. Olga, that's good. And Olga, where are you from? <clears throat> Educational journal, right? Okay. Uh, interactive communication. All right. Sharing uh, opinions. All right. So, yes, networking. Thank you, Susan. Oh, yeah, I remember Susan from other sessions on Moodle MOOC. So she was very active. It was great. All right. So um, let's see. Um, so this is a definition of uh, blogs. Uh, blogging is about writing. Bl blogging is a, a log or a journal, as you said, but that is, that is located on the web. And blogging is about writing and reading. It's not about just technology and technology platform. That we have to, that's why it's a, it's a really powerful tool if we keep remembering this. And when using um, a classroom or a student blog, it, we can really develop connections and, and integrate global learning and global community in your classrooms and people can communicate and grow uh, grow professionally grow uh, grow as learners grow grow as readers grow uh, grow as um, participants and people who know how to communicate interact respect others how to comment. So it really has a, a lot of aspects when you use blogging. And especially as a teacher, you can really reach a lot of goals when you teach. And this, by the way, it's a, it's a part of infographics that uh, Sylvia, um, the author of this languages blog, who is a language teacher, and she, she, she used to live in the United States, she lived in Spain, I think, and now she ended up living in Brazil. But she is very famous as many other, uh, I will share you some interesting blogs. Um, and uh, infographics really fits well with it. So when blogging, uh, and when you have to keep in mind, um, it is a form of a website. It's not a fully website, but it's a form of a website. It is updated very often. Its, uh, it's articles appear in the reverse chronological order. So each new, each new uh, post or a new entry, blog entry, would be above the previous one. So it, it has its own interface. That's what blogging is. Um, it is frequently crawled by search engines. It covers a wide variety of articles. So, uh, especially when when you uh, when I teach um, different courses, I give students weekly assignments to pay attention to some concepts, to pay attention to some questions or uh, I give them a link to a video, or I show a video in the class, and then I ask them to reflect on it using blog. Then go back to class classmates and see how their comments are different or similar. It is easy to set up. And why blogging matters? Because, you know, within this Five thousands of blogs uh, now were created, and every day thousands of blogs are being created. So it like right now that was one of the um, 
uh, infographics that I found, 120 million Americans read blogs. And something about 50, 000, 50 million blogs were created at this point. So, why blogging? And uh, blogging really provide uh, students, learners, with authentic learning opportunity. It gives audience, and audience can be different, but if you are an open-minded minded person, uh, an open-minded teacher, so it really opens global uh, audience and engage um, students in conversation with experts, with friends, with co uh, co-learners from different country and it can be done in any age uh, and for example uh, Sylvia she was um, sharing her experience she did uh, a project um, for four graders were reading each other books and were giving comments Second graders, and if you view the videos, what the language of these kids, second graders, is, is they were using such wonderful. Um, I have an evidence. One one student would say, the evidence is I I uh, watched and I looked and I now I know how to comment. I know how to give feedback. So it really opens. It's a, it's a really powerful tool. It becomes um, a tool for teachers to create uh, thinkers, creative and critical thinkers. And uh, of course, uh, it teaches students to become global citizens because they learn how to respect others, how to behave on the internet, and um, how to, to do networking. So they become global friends and they create these connections with people. Um, so uh, there are several programs, platforms that can be used to design blogs. And if you, if you, um, so one of the um, many is if you let's easily create and manage student and teacher's blogs and quickly customize and include videos, edu blogs, and many uh, teachers. Um, I think Nelly and I, we tried every, every platform possible. Um, and uh, so it it's really um, gives a very professional, uh, it's, it's all, all, almost all these platforms are free, um, edu blogs. Uh, then Blogger, and if you have your Gmail account, it's right in your tools, in your Gmail account. If you go to on the tab, in the black tab on top, and go scroll down uh, in more, and you will see Blogger is right there in your Google Mail account. And what is wonderful about Blogger, and if you use uh, Google Chrome, Google Chrome has uh, a plugin it's called blogger and you can add it right into your menu in your uh, in your uh, menu on your Chrome and wherever you travel uh, I mean on the internet so you can click blogger and it it keeps it creates a post right from uh, from the place you were and you can use videos or whatever content you were searching you were looking so you can use it right away. Uh, yes, I use Blogger a lot, and my Blogger, uh, my my uh, my own blog is on Blogger, and that's why I mostly post my blog, uh, my blogs and entries. Um, it's easy to use, and because it's Google, um, so you can easily add, and the, all the tools are right in the uh, menu bar, and you can add. Uh, easily integrate and embed videos. You can embed pictures, and and that's what everyone has to remember. It's not just journal. It's not a diary. 
it's a digital tool. It's a digital, um, if you use blog, it should be interactive. It should be uh, with all this digital media, uh, with images, connected links, hyperlinks that bring, bring the reader to a different site, to a different uh, resource, and so on and so forth. And uh, WordPress is another um, platform that many educators use. Um, it's a blogging platform, and students and, and, uh, student can use it. It is easy to use, and it is also free. So there, there is quite a few. And um, so what I uh, also um, wanted to mention is that that um, blogs can be differentiated according to the purpose, according to genre, and according to media and device. So uh, according to purpose, purpose can be personal. Some people keep personal blogs. Um, about their life, about their health, about their uh, about their experiences. Um, another uh, type of blog is microblogging, which is you can use Twitter, Clerk, uh, Facebook, Tumblr. Tumblr easily it, it com Tumblr it combi combines uh, images and videos and links, and it's really kind of uh, very compact, it's, it's very quick. Uh, according to genres, so it can be political blog, it can be social, um, health blog, professional blog, uh, for lawyers, for um, some surgeons have their blogs and they share their experience, their knowledge, their, um, I, for example, I I just recently found out one of my uh, orthopedists, um, I had a problem with the shoulder and uh, I was sent to a neurologist and he became, uh, he happened to be a, such a, such a technologically advanced, I was amazed that he had a website, he had this, he informs her, his clients, his uh, patients about research in the field of neurology and it just, it was amazing. I really applauded him, and he has his own Facebook, and it's it's amazing. So it, it is professional blog, and and he stays connected with the field, and he stays connected with his uh, patients, and um, yes, Nelly. I think I wrote it correctly. <clears throat> so, and um, so, and according to media, um, right now, especially with mobile devices, uh, you can blog uh, using your using your uh, mobile uh, technology, your your iPad, your <clears throat> uh, your. Um, All right, so I, I will try to. Uh, I, I think I did. Just maybe maybe there is some blockage I am in the... Uh... Is it there? Uh, let me see. Okay, do you hear me better? All right, so um, the, the type of blog with uh, media, for example, with video, you can use, and many professors are using, uh, using blogs instead of blogs. And I think it's a really uh, a, a fascinating idea that uh, 
but still students have to write a little bit of script and then they can video record them giving the log of their experience, learning log, their impressions, their observations using video. Uh, it, it's amazing. And uh, iPad allows to do this. Um, when you uh, using iPad, you can record something, you can take pictures of something and immediately send it to your blog. And, and you can record it also send it as a video blog. Uh, and Tumblr, Tumblr logs um, are <clears throat> logs that combine pictures and videos and hyperlinks. And Moblog is another type of blog. It's from your mobile devices. So it's types of blogs for those who are just started blogging. Um, so people are connected uh, in blogs. So there is a collective intelligence collective in, uh, community of bloggers and it's called blogosphere and so it people are and the researchers have analyzed the dynamics of how blogs become popular and if you notice in your own blog there is there are icons on the bottom and the blog roll and you people are get into your blog or you can add other people's blogs and that's how be people become active and uh, so there are actually two measures of this popularity how popular the blogger blog is and through citations for if, if you use um, tags or you use topics so they will be easily uh, found on Google where people are searching for some topics and, and immediately you can find them. Um, as you know, and I'm very proud to say that Nelly is very popular. When, whenever, if you write Nelly's name in uh, Google search, so she comes up, or if you write integrating technology, she comes up right on the first, uh, first um, five uh, links in the search. And uh, so this is, um, so Blogsphere really uh, helps people to be connected. And um, in your blog, you can add uh, your favorite blogs. And people, when, and you also can add a, a link on your blog, uh, visit me or uh, join me. And that people um, join you and become a member of your blog, and that's how you become connected and stay connected. And right now, blogger even uh, so, um, everything is now go going through Google Plus, and uh, you, you you really you can join communities uh, of learners, and you can blog through Google Plus. And by the way, I was in my, both my classes were studying their blogs. And um, I, I, for a while, I didn't do it. But today, what, what is what offered for students today, two options. One option was to join Blogger through Google Plus, and another without Google Plus. And uh, it's interesting. It was very interesting. But the thing is that um, in the college on campus, students uh, have their Gmail, in, but it is a college mail. They integrated uh, Gmail into our college community, but they blocked some of the um, aspects of a Google Mail uh, in IT department. So they blocked uh, Google Plus and they blocked YouTube. So these, these two aspects of Google May uh, students cannot use. Uh, only if they have their personal e Gmail accounts, they can use those options. But generally, they don't do that. So, and this is uh, an image, again, of um, Sylvia uh, from language, languages. I, I like this uh, image that shows what skills students can develop and have uh, through blogging. It's a collaborative, so collaborative skills, professional skills, presentation skills, 
typing, uh, global citizenship, digital uh, learning, uh, connectedness, um, and networking, and writing, and reading, because they write, and they read, and they uh, interact. So it's really, um, it's, students are getting so many uh, skills developed through blogging. So these are steps of uh, how to um, connect and how to design blogs. So first introduction, so uh, you start with opening your account and uh, so blogging is a way of connecting reading, writing, um, learning uh, the content, information, and learning together. And also, it's wonderful that uh, I require, and I will share later, that when I design a rubric for blogging, I include one of the criteria for blogging. Uh, I include uh, comments, learning how to write comments. And it's, um, it's important because blogs are created not just for to write, it's for interaction, it's for connecting with other people, for sharing your ideas, engaging other people to reflect on what you are writing. I enjoy writing, I enjoy reading uh, Nelly's blogs, they're always so insightful and so in, 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 um, enlightening and uh, welcoming to your conversations and sharing. So second of all, it's reading. Uh, it involves reading. Becoming, becoming a reader of a variety of blogs is very important. And um, so teachers usually engage students to write blogs, but they also engage students to read blogs. And uh, some students give assignments for, for students to, uh, to contact in, in the topics that they are learning. And uh, so students have to read and find um, the experts. And um, it really um, develops students' metacognitive skills uh, and motivation in the reading. Uh, and it's all connected to engaged learning. Um, uh, Margarita, I will, yeah, I will discuss this later, right. Uh, it's a good question about how to assess student blogs. <clears throat> so, of course, the third expert is citizenship. Um, so, um, through blogging, students learn how to communicate, how to respect um, how to um, recognize um, global and online behavior uh, and how to um, how to how to remember how each time you access and you write something on the internet it you leave a footprint so uh, it also teaches students to learn to respect copyright and to use creative commons. Uh, when they use images or they use videos, they have to provide link to other uh, people's intellectual property. Uh, commenting, as I said, is also very important to teach students to give quality uh, comments. Not just, I like this, or uh, oh, it's interesting. Oh, it's cool. Go beyond that. Students have to not just comment, but explain what exactly they liked or what exactly they agree with and why, what they, what they disagree with and why. Um, so again, uh, the fifth element is writing. <clears throat> and uh, Writing is age, age and development really appropriate uh, with the content that they use and, and how they use grammar, vocabulary focus. And of course, um, students, when students are given assignments, they have to use relevant content 
traditional quality writing characteristics. And I, I enjoyed watching while I was preparing. I was looking through so many sites, and uh, one of the sites of um, I, somehow I really enjoyed looking at um, Celia's um, blog. And uh, he was, she was teaching, she was sharing with the students, I think it was fourth graders, where students were analyzing uh, what a good blog is, what is, what is, what is a good writing. When you write something, it's not just beating about the bush, you have to write about content. And you, you give a, a very, I teach students that, and I tell them that when you give a, a name to your blog, or you give a name to the title, title to your entry. So it, it really shows your metacognitive skills. It should reflect the whole content of the entry and should be catchy. And it, it really quintessence of, of the content of the blog entry. So it, it's really um, uh, a wonderful tool to develop students' creative thinking and uh, creative writing. And so in the commenting. <clears throat> so, um, and it's, it allows uh, connect students with the world. And first, with local community, students can write blogs about local uh, neighborhood. Um, they can write about families. And then they can develop their uh, scope of connectedness with the world, with the, with the state, the a world, with peers in the world, and experts. It, it's really important. And um, if you saw the uh, YouTube video of a seventh grader, um, I think what it was, it was about a personal learning uh, environment. And the student was sharing. She used um, which program? She used one of the programs that um, she showed her personal networks and she was sharing that the teachers give, gave us assignment in, a, in science and so she couldn't find an answer in, in the book so she went online and she connected with some scientists and the scientists um, didn't connect, and she went. Uh, it was in the country. Then she found somebody in Australia or somewhere somewhere else, and the expert answered her questions. So it really, it's it really amazing how students easily can be connected to the whole world. So, and what is also wonderful and is the right thing if you do want to become uh, an uh, effective blogger. So blogs are created with the help of digital um, media. So you can add audio, you can add images, you can add uh, videos, and it's very easy to do. So audio, video, images, and the links to other websites, other resources. So then you really enlighten other readers to go and explore other sites, other uh, other uh, experts, and other blogs and uh, other resources. So, um, so the steps in blogging. Um, so you choose any platform that you like and you are comfortable with, and uh, and if you do it in class. So you, uh, of course, you inform parents that you will be doing it and um, request uh, parents' uh, permission. And two students about, that should be one of the first aspects of conversation of teaching students how to blog, uh, should be a conversation about digital citizenship and online safety. And, um, if an active blog, an active PowerPoint presentation, you can go to this website, to this article that 
uh, gives almost a script of a lesson how to teach digital citizenship. Um, and also, it would be nice before studying the project, working project in the class, you have to teach students maybe one of the lessons should be about how to comment on the blogs. What is a good comment? What is a good way to give comments uh, on the content of the blogs? <clears throat> it would be uh, also good to say that blogs should be not long. They should be short and informative, enlightening. There should be some kind of questions. And also, it would be nice inter interaction and engaging the reader into the uh, conversation so that there would be a way of people to write comments about the posts. Uh, use simple language and correct grammatical structures. And if you uh, if you know, but there is a, a very interesting um, site. It's called Grammarly.com. If if you want to check uh, your posts from the point of view of grammar, so you can really easily check this. Um, so and of course, in, invite parents to if you it's in the classroom, you can invite parents. Um, in the class to, uh, to participate and students will be thrilled to share what they are learning in class with the parents and see how parents will reflect on, on those uh, blogs about learning. Uh, and of course it, it's great to engage other classes into blogging. Uh, for example, I um, Two semesters ago, I was connected with Russia, and my students were interacting with the um, Institute of Olga, you probably know, and GIMO. It's an international institute of uh, international relationships. And uh, there was a sociologist and, and journalist in that group. And my students are future teachers of social studies. There were so many interesting topics to discuss. Nelly and I are also participating in international writing exchange project. And people from and uh, students from Japan, um, France, G um, China, Germany uh, participate in this project. And it's amazing how Korea. You see, uh, students interact with each other and comment on each other's posts. It really uh, makes uh, learning more exciting. Um, it really gives students freedom to explore the blog. Um, and what the question was, or uh, Olga asked a question about, um, or Margarita asked a question about grading. So probably you should minimize in order to engage students in the writing, uh, in the writing and uh, um, interacting. So probably you have to minimize grading. And a blogging is meant to be a way to practice writing for an audience and learning to respond on um, critique, not graded paper. So um, you can you can do this. Uh, you can do this separately from blogging. But blogging, if you really, um, and, and by the way, knowing students become very respon responsible when they know that the content would be published on the internet. And especially if you, um, if students are participating, um, if students are participating in some international project, so they really become, they, they, they have this pride. We have to write correctly in order to, you know, to compete with other students from a different country. And then, again, using blogging, you can challenge students. Use activities and games to inspire them to write about certain topics. Uh, give them more time to get used to and to learn how to write um, good uh, comments. And um, so I, here are a few um, samples, uh, samples of blogs from my class. 
and uh, so I really spent the first um, first uh, couple of lessons, the sessions I spent with students, and when they start designing their blogs, I really keep them um, on the same page, and I ask, now think, how would you like uh, to reflect your own personality and reflect the content that you are learning in this course and uh, name your blog appropriately or uh, showing that what the readers will learn from the blog about you and about about your um, your experiences so uh, so this is one of the blogs uh, the truth is in the fact it's one of the um, uh, graduate students, so it, it was um, uh, Zach, his name was Zach, and so he wrote his blog, he called his blog this way, and so you see they were using um, Wordle to, it was a final blog, and, and so he created, uh, out of all the topics of the course, he created this word blog. Uh, this is, I think, Sarah's blog. And she uh, decided to use a picture from the final classes. I usually do in my final classes. I use um, job interviews where they uh, interview each other and about the topics. And so they uh, took pictures, and that's what the reflection was of that class. Um, I have I have a couple of new others, so. It's, uh, it's about artifact bag, and the student was proudly showing what book and what book she brought for this artifact bag pro project. And uh, this is Susan. Her, her blog was called um, Social Studies Adventures. Oh, Voyage. That was a uh, voyage. And this is a blog of Brittany, and she called it I Want to Blog. Somehow she couldn't start her blog. And she kept uh, losing her blog, and it was disappearing. <laughs> in the end, that's what she called her blog. I want to blog, but she couldn't. And uh, she she was connected with uh, Google, uh, asking what's happening, why her blog was disappearing, and she couldn't access her blog for quite a while. So, uh, so some more learning to teach future global citizen. Uh, Sarah's social studies adventures. So, um, and you see, they were using pictures, they were using uh, images, they were using links, they were using videos. Uh, and in the beginning, they were really um, kind of apprehensive. And uh, by the way, this this semester, I started my classes, all my classes, with with a Absolutely, I, I, I really love this project. I call it digital project, uh, becoming digital teachers. And I, what I did, I had I in both classes, I have 19 and 18 uh, teacher candidates, and I gave them in every class 18 or 20 digital tools, so that they would create a tool describing who they are. So. And some students were really, they were not digitally uh, ready, but because it was, a, in a way, it was competition and they all wanted to present themselves, it was absolutely wonderful. So there was Wordle, there was Exito, there was uh, Pinterest, there was Prezi. So, and I was telling them, uh, you know, this is the beginning of the semester. This is the project. So you today you they you know, they will send one tool to use, and and by the end of the class they learn 18 of them. It was amazing. They were so happy, and they now they have ideas to design their lesson using those tools. So uh, I really uh, enjoyed it. So. And these are the blogs that I really uh, love, and I follow these blogs. Uh, Vicky Davis and Millie actually uh, had uh, interviewed uh, Vicky Davis. And if you know, Vicky Davis is um, one co-founder of Flat Classroom. 
uh, project. And so um, she is a really digital teacher and she has so many ideas in her blog. Um, uh, she, Cool Cat Teacher, is an absolutely wonderful blog. She shares her experience, she shares her classroom, uh, she, what she does with iPad in the classroom, what she does uh, for project, flat classroom project. Um, Wesley uh, Frey is the uh, moving at the speed of creativity, is uh, another person to follow. He really uh, is a um, promoter of creative thinking and uh, wonderful. So free technology for teachers uh, a wonderful, um, wonderful um, blog and he's a winner. Um, and uh, so he shares, I think, like he's a ghetto ahead of the game. Um, he participates, as this is the person, he participates in uh, ISTE conferences and uh, in Edutopia, and he's a big presenter at many, um, uh, many conferences about blogging and about, actually, about the tools, about how to use technology effectively. And mostly, he shares only three tools. So find this blog and follow it. It's wonderful. Mindshift is a, a, is a wonderful blog um, about paradigm shift and about um, challenges that teachers face and how to uh, overcome those challenges. Uh, Flip Learning Blog is a wonderful, uh, also wonderful site for those who want to become um, teachers, fleet learning teachers, uh, wonderful ideas, wonderful tools. Uh, Larry Pelazzo website, uh, I like uh, Larry's, he's also a language teacher and social studies teacher, so I, I enjoy the, reading his blogs and what is also cool about his blogs, he sometimes uh, collects uh, highlights. For example, he, co he collects in the end of the year, he would collect uh, his uh, highlights of his blogs throughout the year and make one blog about the topic that he would do. Uh, uh, with, with inspired Learning uh, is a very interesting blog uh, of Chrissy. So she, it's a wonderful blog. Uh, about creativity and how to really develop creativity and um, and how to be creative teacher and languages. I already told you the magic of learning is a, a wonderful, wonderful block to follow. Um, so some I would like to share with you some rubrics. So this is one of the rubrics, and it's it's a kind of uh, for a scoring rubric, and what is what the criteria are the content, uh, so interactiveness of the blog, uh, style of the blog, and frequency and consistency uh, of the blog. So um, that's how it can be uh, graded in the end um, of the of the uh, whole semester, of the whole term, uh, and. Uh, this is my rubric that I designed for my classes, and so it, it includes blog structure and designs, and it has uh, three levels, and uh, so there are, uh, and then second is the blog entry and assignment insight, so that to see if students really reflected uh, and uh, the, the last comment that I said, it's about comments. Uh, and students, in the end of the um, one week, I usually require students to self-evaluate themselves. So they have to submit this rubric to me with the link to the blog. And also, they have to provide the links when they are here in, in the comments area. They have to provide the links to the blog that they were are commenting on. So uh, yeah, that's the rubric uh, rubrics, and you can see more 
vividly and uh, in your uh, in digital presentation. So, and these are the two sets. Uh, these are the, some resources, and the other resources are on my other pages. I and uh, when you use Google Docs, it allows you to use so many um, resources right there uh, at your fingertips. So, and uh, I left a few minutes uh, for questions, and I have to leave because I have uh, um, a, an interesting party, uh, party uh, community event. We have a new vice president, and so she designed uh, a new uh, tradition. It's called Thank God It's, it's uh, Friday, and today is this meeting for all our school community uh, for um, about the fall. And yes, it's a wonderful tradition, and it creates, as again, a sense of community. We, we do need that. All right, so uh, Nelly, you want to... Uh, uh, now, question time, question and answer time. So, or we can now uh, ask what everybody's experience is. Uh, uh, Margarita, in every blog, there is, uh, after each post on blog, uh, Margarita, in every blog, there is, uh, after each post on blog, in Blogger, there is a space for comments. And students have to have blogs themselves in order to comment. They have to identify themselves. So that's how they... Uh, they um, uh, when, when I give feedback, uh, feedback on students' blogs, I give blogs uh, regularly. Uh, we use Moodle. I have a new class, and uh, I give them my feedback through uh, personal emails or personal. Uh, yes, I allow, and I, that's what I'm telling students. I tell them the beauty of online digital blogs. Kind of, is that uh, if you if you submitted yeah. hand uh, handwritten a uh, hard copy, you can it kind of uh, edit it. But I allow students because I want them to become reflective thinkers. I allow them. I give them my feedback, and I allow them to go back and improve their blog writing. Yes, I give them feedback individually, and I allow them to go back and improve. If there was only text, well, there were no invitation to digital divide, digital media, no videos, no pictures. So I allow go back and find. And by the way, it was very interesting today. One of my students came uh, came to class, and she actually wrote me before class saying, "Dr. Zinova." Uh, I found this wonderful yeah. video about history because one of the first chapters we are studying is about history in social studies. And so she says, "Can I share it with with the uh, with the class? Where can I post? Uh, can I post just on my blog or can I post on discussion forum for class?" And I I, I came into class. I said I was I was so happy to hear that you already thinking digitally you're already ready to share and that's what today's world is about sharing is caring when you share other people learn and they um you enrich each other so it's wonderful it's contagious um, in my class i ask everybody to share publicly make their blog public. in my class i ask everybody to uh, uh, share publicly, make their blogs uh, public, allow to join uh, and uh, to so, and yeah, people are usually uh, allowed to join their blogs, and I am one of them. So and uh, and because you see all these big big names and big people, big educators, they they make their blogs public. And they share, and that's how you 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 go into world. You want to be part of that world. 
I don't think so. DJ With Nella, or... there was an interesting comment. I don't know if you noticed it from Olga about, um, do you see it? I'll tell you, it's about being, yeah, exactly. It's about being scared uh, of having the blog public. You know what, Olga? The chances that somebody will see it are very slim unless you market your blog and advertise it. I mean, who do you think is going to see it? Well, well, the thing is, I am Russian, but I'm not scared. Right. I don't know, maybe because from the very beginning, well, well, the thing is, I am Russian, but I'm not scared. I don't know, maybe because from the very beginning step, from the, my first steps here in when I started teaching, I embrace technology and uh, use technology openly and without any fear because I I saw the importance and the the value of it, and uh, and I I was not I I was never scared I was never scared and oh why not uh, why not and. I maybe I I'm at the stage where I can share and I want other people to share this passion. So that's why I'm not scared. Um, yeah, I'm Russian, but uh, <laughs> I would no, not say that it's, it's uh, Russian nature. It's uh, not well. Um, and even back in Russia, I I I was I was what I believed it. I was not. In any was, case, the chances for what I was doing. Yeah, I wanted to say that the chances it. of anyone seeing your blog are very slim. <laughs> Most people would like their yes, blogs Nelly, to be seen, to and they do their best to make them public and advertise uh, them and so on. But Olga, I don't know if you make your blog public if anyone is going to see it, yeah. unless you publish it for specific people. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and and yeah. And uh, and right. So, yes. And and I wanted to say there was a question about uh, yeah. Blogs and uh, and so I wanted to say something. There was a question about uh, blogs on Moodle. Uh, I uh, the 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 problem with the previous versions of Moodle is that uh, blogs were would be seen by everybody, um, I mean, from all the community of the college uh, or between other co classes. So uh, I prefer to use outside, and then you can integrate into into your into uh, Moodle. What I usually do is I create a forum uh, on uh, Moodle class, and I, a forum where I ask them to share their blogs links so that they would join their blogs in the class. They join blogs in the, within the class and then they, and I to, tell them when they, uh, usually they work throughout the course, they work in groups. And I ask them to visit blogs of their group partners. And but also, yeah, I said, just go and browse through all blogs and see which blogs you like the best. And and then maybe you will find somebody that site for very interesting, intelligent blogs. And they are not your group, but you would like to... to okay, um, Ludmilla, so, I think that uh, it's a good idea if you can continue... Yeah, if you can join the course, and Ludmilla is going to uh, yeah. add uh, information there, Ludmilla, right, at the uh, Teaching with Technology course, and then you can ask uh, further questions there throughout the week, or if no. you think of something next week or the week after. Okay, so uh, Ludmilla is part of the course, okay. so uh, feel free to use that for questions. Ludmilla, are you going to be running into class? What's... Okay. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> I have to go to uh, different rooms. 
right. So thank you very yeah, much. Uh, well, yeah, well, yeah, I have to go to uh, different rooms. All right. And so thank you very much, everybody. Uh, it was a pleasure. Yeah, I'd like to thank Ludmilla because Ludmilla is at the university. She's in the middle of uh, classes. Um, she's got a full day. So uh, it really uh, is inspirational uh, that she came because she's so passionate about blogging. So uh, this was something that she wanted to share with you. And I'm looking forward to see, we are looking forward to see everyone's uh, link to their right. blogs so that we can learn together. So thank you so much. Our next uh, sessions will be, we're going to continue um, talking about blogs and we'll have other presenters with other right. perspectives. Nancy Zingrona is here and she's also going to be talking about blogs and from a different perspective and uh, marketing and how to... Um, Use blogging to promote your courses, for example, and other things that you're doing. So that's really exciting. We're also having a, sec a session on blogs tomorrow with Dr. Crystal Brody. So you're invited to uh, join that as well. And that's part of the uh, blending and flipping classes with technology. Did I add the link to that course? If not, here it is. It's blending and flipping. I feel like a, an acrobat when I say that. Uh, blending and flipping <laughs> with technology. Thank you, Ludmilla, and thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye for now. Okay. Thank you.